Now, Gorno Karabakh, Armenia, what's yeah. going on with them? Mainstream media is not talking about this a lot. Armenians face genocide in Azerbaijan. Former International Criminal Court prosecutor warns, this is AP News a couple days ago. The former ICC chief prosecutor, Luis Moreno Ocampo, warns of an impending genocide against ethnic Armenians in Azerbaijan, nagorno karabakh region, urging the UN Security Council to intervene. Akampo's report highlights Azerbaijan's blockade of the sole road connecting Armenia to nagorno karabakh severely impeding supplies for 120,000 residents. These are 120,000 people and risking a humanitarian catastrophe. The report notes that there's reasonable basis to believe that a genocide is being committed right now. The situation emerged after Armenia-backed forces controlled nagorno karabakh until a 2020 war with a compo urging the Security Council, including Russia and the U.S., to act and prevent a worsening crisis. And this continues with other stories that are asking for support. And, you know, Nicole uh, Pashinyan is talking about uh, uh, issues a stark warning, asserting that if Azerbaijan obstructs humanitarian aid via the Leitchen Corridor, it will prove that its real goal is to starve the people of nagorno karabakh and to subject them to genocide. Pashinyan reveals that humanitarian relief has reached Korenzor, the gateway to Lachin Corridor, but Azerbaijan is hindering its passage, amplifying an eight-month-long humanitarian crisis. He condemns obstruction and incomprehensible and unacceptable. Pashinyan challenges Azerbaijan's stated pretext for blocking the corridor, saying, what does Azerbaijan not allow this cargo to enter nagorno karabakh Is it not because the real goal of Azerbaijan is to start the people in nagorno karabakh to subject them to genocide? So when you hear a story like this, there's, there's a couple different things. Ukraine and Russia, okay? That's a example of what Russia and Ukraine, to have the conflict with each other. Armenia, you have Azerbaijan, okay? And then you have this area, nagorno karabakh that used to be theirs, that is now ours, and now they're kind of sharing it together. It's kind of like East Ukraine and, you know, West Ukraine. It's like this Ukraine, they all speak Russian. This Ukraine is different, so I understand on the East Ukraine side, it's more like this, but West Ukraine is... There's an element of that going on here. But what you don't hear about with this proxy war that's going on between Ukraine and Russia, you don't hear about Russians preventing Ukrainian people from eating food yeah. or vice versa. That's not happening there. They just have a war that's going on between the two of them, okay? What is happening here with Armenia and Azerbaijan, it's a long-standing genocide that happened many, many years, over a century ago, April 24, 1915, over a century ago, a million and a half to 2.2 million Armenians Assyrians and Greeks. You and I are Assyrian. Yep. I'm Armenian and Greeks are part of this. That now some, I don't know what the number is, 60 plus countries have said, no, this is an event that took place. There's a great movie that was done by Kirk Kerkorian uh, where Christian Bale is in the movie highlighting what the motive was behind the insurance policies. And if you've never seen it, you got to go watch this movie. I think it's called The Promise, Rob, if you can pull up the movie. But it's tragic what's going on there. Uh, I know in L.A., Adam Schiff, believe it or not, is going out there writing a letter, I believe, to Biden saying we got to do something about this. And Adam Schiff is a guy from the left that's sitting yeah. out there saying we got to do something about this. Uh, it's catastrophic. It's heartbreaking that this is happening. Um, but at the same time, I hope mainstream media starts talking about this so it gets the attention of people because there's, there's different kinds of support. There's the support you give to Ukraine because you want Putin to fall because you don't like Putin, right? That's kind of like... You're, you're, you're getting involved in elections, kind of like this gentleman from China that said about what they're doing in the U.S. to hurt kind of the candidates. It's a speech that we haven't played yet. And then there's difference between that versus supporting what's going on in Hawaii or actually helping people that are in major need because a genocide is taking place, but you don't want to get involved because Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan is linked to Turkey, hmm. and Turkey's Erdogan, and they now have one of the best militaries in Turkey, and he just recently won an election, which was very weird because a lot of Turkish built people... Built by yeah. us. Yeah, built by us. So, so it, deeply concerning. It's something that, uh, um, you know, uh, the, you know, when I sat down with Tate and then uh, Tate and Tucker had a conversation with Azerbaijan and the comments that was made about Azerbaijan, we don't know all the stories about everybody. I'm about to have a debate here with two folks that are pro-Muslim and two folks that were not, and they've all agreed to come and do this podcast. I can't wait for this podcast. It's going to be in the next month or two. It's going to be great. I've been having a lot of conversations with Muslims because I think this is a conversation that I want to have. Um, the folks, especially the leaders at the top of Azerbaijan and Turkey, what they're doing with Armenians is a travesty, 
And I think when something like this happens where people are standing in line for hours to get bread, some areas don't have water, food, medicine, kids are sick, they don't have access to the basic stuff that you need on a daily basis, it's catastrophic. So our prayers goes out to the folks there, and we hope more people talk about this to bring attention to what's really going on over there. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.